Cerebral contortions number three. Let's look at c the uh, test bank solutions and I'll try and explain them a little bit further so if you had some difficulties you'll understand it a little better. So let's look at question number three first. Question number three, it says a train X meters long takes 30 seconds from the time it first enters a tunnel that is 400 meters long and until it is completely through the tunnel. So that's the whole train. So it starts and it finishes like that. Okay. A stationary ceiling light in the tunnel is directly above the train for 10 seconds. So basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it finishes like that. Find the value in meters of x. So what you're given is that this is 400 meters and the train travels x plus 400 meters in 30 seconds. If you think about it, it starts here and it takes 30 seconds to get completely through until that goes there. So it would be the length of the train uh, or length of the train plus the 400 meters to get through. That's 30 seconds in total. And the train travels X meters in 10 seconds, which we know because that's how long it got, it went through there. So those are the two pieces of information you're given. So now, um, you could, let's just work with this rather than writing a whole bunch of algebraic um, equations. It, therefore, it must have traveled 400 meters in 20 seconds because it, if you say X meters in 10 seconds, so you've taken out, if you take out that X, you take out 10 seconds basically. And so if you take out 10 seconds, you're 20 seconds. So 400 meters in 20 seconds. So if it's 400 meters in 20 seconds, and you basically know the length of the train is in 10 seconds, so if 400 meters in 20 seconds, then in 10 seconds it's half that, so it'd be 200 meters in X. Okay? So X meters. Or it's 200, 200 meters, um, X is 200 meters, that's it. Okay? So that's kind of cool. Uh, some people like to use algebra or ratios or other things. It's actually pretty straightforward once you get the concept of what's really going on here. All right, and drawing pictures is, always helps. All right, number seven. Number seven says the sides of a certain right triangles are Pythagorean triples. In some such triangles, the sum of one of the tri sides of the triangle, so one side, plus the hypotenuse is equal to 49 centimeters. Find the sum in centimeters of the lengths of the third sides of all such triangles. So the sum of the third sides, I'm just going to put a little S there, sides of all such triangles. So let's first of all have, let X represent the third side and Y represent the side with the hypotenuse that is equal to 49 centimeters. So you know that X squared plus Y squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared in this triangle. And so X squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus Y squared if you put everything on that side. So if x squared, therefore, the hypotenuse is 49 minus y. Okay, from this equation. So 49 minus y, all squared minus y squared. Just bring that in here. And now if you solve for y, this is what you get. Now, the, the next thing is for you to think about, all right, so if this is true, y is equal to this, then what values of x would hold this true? Now, it does say in your solution, since y must be an integer, x must be an odd integer divisible by 7 and less than 49. Ugh, why? Okay, well, let, let's look at this for a second. Okay, we know that this has to be an integer because it is Pythagorean triple. And Pythagorean triples are all integral and numbers. So that has to be an integer. Okay, that's the first part. Second part. It says it must be an odd integer. Well, why is it odd? Well, this is number one. It's an odd number. And in order for it to be properly divisible by 98, it has to be divisible by 2. And 98 is also divisible by 7. So, um, so if you look at that, this number has to be divisible by 2 and by 7. So this number, x squared, um, must be, and 2401 is divisible by 7. So if you look at the x squared, it has to be odd because all the odd numbers, when you, perfect squares of odd numbers are odd, have an odd units digit themselves. For example, if you take 3 squared, it's 9. 5 squared is 25. 
7 squared 49. So you need an odd number to make this an even number overall. Okay? So if this is an even number, then it's divisible by 2, and that would be divisible by the 2 from the 98. Then you also need this divisible by 7 for the 98 as well. So that's why it's divisible by 7 and an odd integer. All right? And less than 49, the reason why it has to be less than 49 is because 2401 is 49 squared. So x squared has to be less than this number for it to be an integer. If it was actually 49, then this would be 0 over 98, which would be 0, and that doesn't work. That doesn't give you a triangle. So it has to be less than 2401. So you think about the nature of the number that you're looking for, and you will actually um, you'll come up with the answers. So if you, look, if you know that, it's going to be uh, an odd integer divisible by 7, your options for Pyth Pythagorean triples. And if you don't know all your Pythagorean triples, go and look them up, please. Um, but your options would be then 7, 21, or 35. And if you sum these together, you get 63. Okay? This is where the, the difficulty lies often. All right, let's look at number 10. In number 10, it states two integers are selected from the first 1,024 positive integral perfect squares. What is the probability that both of these numbers are fifth powers of integers? All right, so you're picking two integers from the first 1,024 um, perfect squares. So because we're picking from a perfect squares, then these two numbers have to be a perfect square themselves, so they must be a perfect square. And it set states that they have to be a fifth power. So if they are both a perfect square and a fifth power, that means that they are a tenth power. So the tenth power has to be less than the, the first um, for all of this. So the tenth power is less than 1024 squared, must be the tenth powers that are less than whatever that number is. And that here is the number right here. So what is that? Um, 1,048,576, okay? So all the tenth powers less than this. So then you list out the tenth powers. The tenth powers are 1 to the tenth, 2 to the tenth, 3 to the tenth, and 4 to the tenth. If you go higher than 4 to the tenth, you're going to be greater than this number. So these all qualify, all right? So because they qualify, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers. So the probability is 4 out of 1024, because that's the total number of numbers for the first choice. But you have two integers, so your second integer is not the same as the first. So you are left with only three choices after that out of 1023 numbers, because you've already picked one number here. And if you multiply that out, that's what you get. All right, another option, if you know um, choose notation. Now, a lot of people don't know this for probabilities, um, but if you do know it, you could say um, 4 choose 2, you have four numbers. You're choosing two of them out of a total of 1024, choose two numbers. And that gives you the probability. So it's the number of possibilities over the total. And that gives you the answer too. All right, so those are the first three. Now let's go over and do the next three in the reduced bank. All right, now let's look at question number five. A grocer bought some oranges at a cost of three for 48 cents. Then and then twice as many at a cost of four for 58 cents. In order to make a profit of 25%, he must sell them all at a price of four for M cents. And you're to find M right here. Okay, so first of all, because you've got three for 48 and four for 58, you want to find the least common multiple. And the least common multiple of 3 and 4 is 12. So let's work with 12 and, multi and multiples of 12. So if a grocer had bought 12 at 3 for 48 and 24 at 4 for 58, because we're working the least common multiple, then the total cost is, now this would be four groupings if it was 12 at 3 for 48. So we have four groupings of 48. And this would be six groupings, 24 divided by 4. We give you six groupings, or six bunches, for 58 cents. So that gives you a total of $5.40. Okay, so now, that's the cost of just of buying them. 
So now he wants to make a profit of 25%. So to make a 25% profit, he needs to get 540 times 1.25, which equals $6.75, okay, from the sale of 36 oranges. That's what we came up with, okay? So you've got 36 um, oranges, and you're going to have to sell for $6.75. So if you know that's 36, for every four oranges sold, he must receive six seventy-five divided by thirty-six times four, okay? Or you could have just divided by nine if you wanted, um, and that equals seventy-five cents. So there, there's, there's your answer, all right? Because it says you must sell four for m cents. Now, an alternative method is just to find. Uh, let's just look at this alternative method. Is to find the average cost of one orange, which is fifteen cents. If you did that. And then you take that 15, multiply it by 4, and it's 60 cents. And if you did 25% on top of that, so 60 times 1.25 would give you 75 cents. All right? So you can do either way. It's fine. But it's just for you to understand what's going on. Okay, question number 8. Adolphus at corner A, so we have corner A here, is walking to Carrie's place at corner C. So... Adolphus walks along, these are all pathways, okay? On, on the way, he will stop off at the bakery at corner B. So you've got this little corner right here on the grid. If he happens to pass it, okay? So if he happens to pass it, he'll stop there. If Adolphus always walks to the east or to the south, so then he goes this way and that way, so this way and that way, what is the probability that he will arrive at the bakery during his trip. So basically, you want to know how many pathways there are in total, and then what's the probability that he, that pathway will go through this B, basically is what it's asking. Okay, so probability of arriving at the bakery. All right, so the first part is the number of routes from A to B, so if you find out these number of routes here, is uh, five choose three. So basically, it's, um, let, let's just go back uh, over here because you know it's five because it's one, two, three, four, five. And this is pathways type of question. And then you choose uh, three. So when you do the factorial, it is three factorial over two factorial, okay? And that's a whole other um, video on how to do pathway questions. So that's something very different I'm not going to go into. Well, it's not different, it is here, but I'm not going to go into that detail here right now. Um, you can ask your teacher too for some help on this part if you want, okay? But basically, you've got the roots, which is 10. Now, the number of roots from B to C is the same 10 roots, because if you notice over here, if you come on over here on this, you'll see that B is right in the center, basically. And so you have the same um, three by two grid here. This is a three by two grid, okay? So you have the same grid. So it's going to be 10 different routes as well. So you've got from A to B is 10. B to C is the same 10. The total number of routes from A to C passing through B, which is the important part, is 100, 10 times 10. Now, why do you multiply that? That is, if again, if you come back here, and I'll explain why you multiply. It's because you have 10 routes to get to here. And because you already have 10 for every one of these, is, is you've got 10 coming in. So 10 times 1, 10 times 2, 10 times. Okay, so you need to, basically you're saying there's 10 here, also, also another, and 10 here, so it's a multiple of 10. Okay, you don't add it. So it is 100 roots that can pass through B. All right, now total number of paths from A to C, because we need to know the total now. We've got the number of paths that pass, go through B, but we have to find the probability. So the total number of paths from A to C is 10 to 6, and that is 210 routes or paths. So the probability of passing by the bakery would be this 100 divided by the total, which is 10 over 21. Okay? So that's number 8. Let's look at number 9 now. In number 9, Amy and Betty roll a fair cubicle die numbered from 1 to 6. Find the probability that Amy rolls a higher number than Betty. Okay, so you want to find Amy rolls a higher number than Betty is what you want to find the probability for that. 
So the probability that Amy and Betty roll the same number is one six, because there's six different choices. There's only one way like to, to get that, okay? So you've got one six. So the probability that one of them gets a higher number than the other is, now the equation is given here, but what is this equation saying? First of all, I'm going to look at this part, one minus one six. It's important that you have that one six because that's the probability of getting the same number. So the probability of not getting the same number would be one minus that. So probability of not getting the same number, all right? So that's the first thing. So you know that she's not going to get the same number because it asks for, um, prob um, what, find the probability that Amy rolls a number, a higher number than Betty. So if she rolls a higher number, she doesn't get the same number. So you needed to find that. Now, why is it that is uh, one half? Well, half will be higher and half will be lower. So it's half of that. So one either or above. So you only have a half of, of those, of these probabilities, like only one half will be above. So, um, and it does higher numbers. So, um, so the answer then you just calculate is five over 12. It's just understanding where this came from. Okay, I hope this helps you and good luck with your contortions number three test.